Hi, I'm Darren Lachelle for NorCal Public Media, and welcome to Don't Wait, Evacuate Questions and Conversation. Tonight, we're going to give you a voice, so we are waiting to hear from you, your phone call or your email, and we'll tell you how to do that in just a moment so that we can answer your questions about what to do during an evacuation fire emergency. Now, if you're looking for Spanish translation of this program, it is provided live right now on our radio partner, that is KJOR La Mejor 104.1, so tune in for that for Spanish translation. We have some great guests with us tonight, some experts in the field here in Sonoma County. First, I would like to introduce Misty Wood. Misty is the Community Engagement Liaison from Sonoma County Sheriff's Office. Welcome, Misty. Thank you, Darren. It's great to have you here. We'd also like to introduce Ben. Um, ben Nichols is CAL FIRE's Division Chief for Sonoma Lake Napa Unit. Hi, Ben. Thank you for having me tonight, Darren. Thanks for being here. Also, Sam Wallace here is the Community Alert and Warning Manager for Sonoma County's Department of Emergency Management. Welcome, Sam. Thank you for having me. Well, I tell you what, before we get into our conversation tonight, we're going to let you know how to get a hold of us. And to do that, we're going to check in with Karen Bell in the Question Center. Karen? Thank you, Darren. Yes, please call the number 1-800-287-2722 where people are standing by to answer, get your questions answered by our panelists. You can also email us at viewer at norcalpublicmedia.org and you can find us on social media of Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at NorCal Public Media. Once again, the number 1-800-287-2722 or email us at viewer at norcalpublicmedia.org. Back to you, Darren. Thank you, Karen. Now, before we get to your questions tonight, make sure you make that phone call or send us that email. We're going to talk with each of our guests here tonight. We're going to start out with Misty Wood. And Misty, tell us a little bit about your role during a fire evacuation emergency. So the Sheriff's Office provides law enforcement services for Sonoma County and my role there during a fire is co-leading our crisis communications team. Mm -hmm. So we're putting all that public information out to the people in Sonoma County. Uh, a big part of our role obviously at the Sheriff's Office is ordering evacuation so we work very closely with our fire partners uh, at Cal Fire and other local agencies. They understand fire behavior, they can tell us where the fire is going and then it's our job to get you out of harm's way from there. All right, well, that is quite a job. Yes, Absolutely. <laughs> it's no small task. <laughs> right. Now, Ben, if you could tell us a little bit about your role um, during a fire evacuation emergency. Sure, Darren. So all fires start small. So the first thing, order of business when our resources arrive at scene is to establish one incident commander at a fixed location, which is called the incident command post, so that if that fire event continues to grow and become a major fire, there's a solid foundation for that incident with one point of contact, one ordering resource to bring all those resources to bear during that incident. And as we've established a fire that's going major, that the priority is to establish the direction and rate of spread or travel of that fire and identify what's out in front as far as threats and risks, including people and infrastructure. And at that point in time, when we're thinking about evacuations, we're in close coordination with the Sheriff's Office under unified command to initiate those evacuations that need to take place. Gotcha. And Sam, during a fire evacuation emergency, um, what do you and your department, or what, what do you um, take care of there? Well, the Department of Emergency Management in general, uh, we do coordination among the many agencies that are out there to support uh, the first responders that are responding to the actual fire. Uh, my specific role is uh, the Community Alert and Warning Manager. When we've reached a state uh, where the Sheriff and CAL FIRE has decided that we need to begin to evacuate, uh, I'm going to be operating multiple systems, uh, such as the SOCO Alert, the Emergency Alert System, the Wireless Emergency Alert System, and even the NOAA Weather Radio System uh, to broadcast the alert to as many people as possible uh, to make sure that they know it's time to leave. Gotcha. All right, well, before we get to um, audience questions here, um, we have had some folks who have gotten a hold of us in the past 24 hours on social media with some of their questions. And, you know, let's start out with one where a gentleman asks, um, he evacuated last year and the fire came nowhere near my home, right? So why didn't they wait on the mandatory evacuations to see you know, where the fire was headed before my, me and my family was evacuated? Um, so I mean, Misty, do you want to take that first? Yeah, I'll, I'll start with okay. that. So what we learned um, during the Kincaid fire in particular is that early evacuation saved lives. 
So we are relying on the information that we get from our fire partners about where the fire is and where the fire is headed. So even though the fire never reaches the farthest reaches of the evacuation zone, it's important to get everybody out of the way because it could. Um, additionally, if we're getting people out of the way quickly, it gives them enough time, if we order those evacuations early, gives them enough time to pack, to make phone calls, to get out safely, so that it's not a crisis when they're leaving. It's not a traffic jam, people aren't panicking. Right, well that makes perfect sense. Um, would you guys like to add anything to that, Ben? Sure, mm -hmm. so um, as Misty indicated, during the Kincaid, um, different communities had different infrastructure to be able to get out of harm's way. So Highway 101 obviously moves a lot more vehicle traffic than Highway 116, Highway 1, and River Road. So um, compounded with the fact that during that event, we had a potential, uh, we didn't have a potential, we had a public safety power shutoff coming and the reliability of the alert and warning network to notify people if conditions changed in the middle of the night generated the need to get those folks moving under daylight hours well in advance of the actual uh, public safety power shutoff. Got it. Now, Sam, to weigh in here, have, when it comes to evacuation hesitancy that we're starting to see in different communities, um, is there anything different that your group is doing to um, alert people or give them warnings that's different than maybe what you're doing four years ago? Well, definitely we do a lot more alerting than we did four years ago. Uh, we relied uh, primarily on only one system uh, back then. Uh, today we use the entire spectrum of uh, resources that are available to us. Uh, everything from, like I said, the emergency alert system to SoCo Alert to WIA. Uh, we uh, even use social media. Uh, our partners with the uh, Sheriff Department are using NICSL, uh, as are many of the fire agencies that are out there. What do you think about um, vulnerable um, seniors and having accessible transportation? Well, this is obviously a, a significant problem and we're well aware of it. Uh, there's uh, a significant portion of the population uh, here in Sonoma County that's over 65 and of course a significant portion that uh, suffer some uh, sort of uh, disability. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we're resource constrained, uh, especially in the om opening moments of a disaster. We don't necessarily have uh, those kind of resources to take care of people individually. Uh, as the disaster matures and we're able to set up more of a structure, uh, we'll be able to uh, pull in uh, the paratransit uh, organizations that normally support uh, that population. Uh, and of course, we have the full resources of uh, many of the uh, city transportation and county transportation agencies that we're able to draw on. Uh, but I can't emphasize this enough, uh, the importance of having your own personal plan uh, already ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, we simply won't be able to react fast enough uh, if you're in an area where you can't re uh, evacuate quickly. Uh, I, har I heartily recommend that you sit down, work out your own plan, mm -hmm. uh, know the people, know your neighbors, uh, that you can uh, reach out to yeah, no and I also add to people that don't necessarily have disabilities that you need to know the neighbors that you have uh, that do have them that uh, that you can uh, assist them to. Right, so that plays into um, where are you supposed to go that you know is accessible so a lot of that is planning in advance mm -hmm. so you know where to go. Um, how about we address that question of um, has anyone talked to the hotel motel industry about the need to keep some of their accessible rooms available for people who may need them? Any conversations there? I, I, I know we've had that conversation in the past. Mm -hmm. I'd have to get back to find out if anybody's had that uh, conversation regularly. Regardless of whether we had that conversation two years ago, it's something that I think needs to be reinforced constantly with the industry. Right. So. So on a, on a broader look here, um, we've heard a lot of great messaging recently about um, knowing what your zone is, right? Which is great because you guys are getting the word out. So I think people are starting to say, oh, I need to know what my zone is when a fire happens again. So when it comes to the zones, um, how are people supposed to find out about what their zone is? So the best thing people can do is go to socoemergency.org mm -hmm. slash evacuation dash map. And there's really two ways they can look up their evacuation zone. They can type their address in the text box and it'll populate with their evacuation zone and those zone boundaries. Or they can load the map and get that same information but in a visual way. So the really nice thing about knowing your zone is when you hear those evacuation orders go out or an evacuation warning, you know right away whether or not you're impacted. 
And we really recommend that people look up their zone for their home, for their children's school, and for their work, or any other places that are really important to them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Sam just talked about the importance of taking care of each other. It's a good idea to look it up if you have an elderly family member or somebody who needs some more assistance so you can help take care of them as well. Mm -hmm. And the whole issue of people maybe not believing that the fire can impact them, right? So, you know, they, maybe they've never been through one, they've never been close to one before, Ben. Um, you know, what would you say to folks who think, well, the danger just really isn't that real? Yeah, it is very real, and it is something that we are uh, seriously considering and, and, and evaluating on how we convey that message to so many people out there, because luckily here locally, we've had several instances during the glass and the wall bridge specifically mm -hmm. where we had people that thought they could fight the fire. They, they thought they had the right defensible space. One gentleman had 20,000 gallons of water and was ready to, to battle the fire um, right up until the fire arrived at his house and melted the plastic piping for his fire protection system and he was there stuck in the fire at that point in time. So at that point in time, that creates a rescue for fire responders uh, and first responders, peace officers and law enforcement officials to try to go into an area that otherwise we would have pulled out from and it, de it diverts those uh, finite resources that we have on that fire ground to a life rescue rather than being able to affect that structure defense that we were able to do in Windsor uh, in 2019 uh, and again more recently in Skyhawk as the glass fire came into Santa Rosa. Great. I think that that is um, a very important point to make, that evacuation um, in general makes sure that an area is free and clear of people so that first responders don't have to go door to door and they don't have to be checking on everybody and they can do their job of trying to make sure that the fire is abated. So now we're going to check in with Karen Bell in the Question Center and see what folks are asking. Karen? Yeah, thanks. Darren, another question from Richard Scaff. So um, what about medical supplies? If Sonoma County has a major disaster event, has the County Health and Human Services Department created stored medicines and medical equipment that could be made available to West County and all county residents? And also from an anonymous viewer, they're concerned about the COVID-19 and the Delta variant uh, that's everywhere. So what about going to shelters? I mean, is it, isn't it just safer to stay at home? Uh, Darren, back to you. Thank you, Karen. Um, we're getting your questions written down here so that we can get to those. You know, Sam, let's start with you talking about the medical supplies. Um, if Sonoma County um, has a major event, um, what can people do for storing their medical supplies, making sure those are taken care of, or if they need to refill a prescription in the midst of an emergency? What are some thoughts that you have on that? Well, one of the things that we've done in previous uh, disasters is that when we get into that situation, of course, many people have to evacuate without bringing their uh, prescription medications. Uh, we have uh, in the past uh, actually deployed teams to the shelters uh, to help fill that need. Uh, very often we do that with a doctor so that they can verify uh, the uh, need and provide a prescription right there. Uh, I do recommend that uh, if, uh, if you haven't done it, include in your evacuation plan to bring your prescriptions uh, with your, at least your written prescriptions or take a picture of it with your phone so you always have it with you uh, in case you mm -hmm. need to show it to us. Uh, so we've been very good about being able to uh, get in medications to take care of people. And of course, we may not have uh, sufficient supplies in the uh, county for large-scale medical uh, response, but uh, we have the resources of the rest of the state of California uh, and our neighboring, neighboring counties that we're able to uh, bring in very quickly. And what about the um, concern that the viewer had about COVID during an evacuation? We all had a little bit of experience with that last year, I think. Um, so how do you make sure that people remain COVID safe um, in shelters when you're bringing people together? That's a great question, and we're uh, fortunately we uh, now have some experience doing that, uh, which we did quite a bit during uh, 2020. Uh, and I will tell you that there was a lot of effort put into it before the disasters to come up with protocols uh, that would keep people as safe as possible. Uh, we very often, uh, when we open our shelters, we have cleaning crews that are routinely going through and scrubbing everything. Uh, we have uh, lots of hand sanitizers. Uh, we uh, actually increase the distances between uh, the cots where we were keeping people 
uh, is to uh, reduce the transmission rate. And we were very proactive about bringing public health in there uh, to look for possible transmission points. So I won't say that it's uh, perfectly safe. However, we do take a lot of precautions uh, to try and minimize the risk. Uh, but I will also say, if, uh, if it's at all possible when you do your uh, personal plan uh, to uh, find another place to go, that is the best possible solution, is to find a family mm -hmm. or a friend uh, that can put you up for a while. Uh, that is much more preferable than uh, coming to our shelters. We'll take care of you, right. but you're probably better off if you can find a, a friend or a family. I think that that's a theme that we see um, over and over here tonight and, and throughout these things is that advanced planning, knowing what to do, having a plan in place, is the most important thing to do um, during the fire season or any time now a days, really. <laughs> Um, I want to follow up with a couple of questions um, from earlier that came in through social media. So, you know, Misty, uh, a lot of people seem to have a concern about their homes, once evacuated, um, being vulnerable to, right. to looting or burglary or any other kind of mischief. And so that's a concern I think people would really like to hear, you know, what the, what the role of the responders are and law enforcement, et cetera. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I actually myself was evacuated twice within 10 months, and I know how stressful it is at a, you know, at a, at a minimum it's a, an inconvenience, mm -hmm. and at a maximum it's, it's devastating. So we, we take it very seriously. Our, you know, our first responsibility when we conduct evacuations is saving life. And then secondarily, once life is protected, it's protecting property. And we do take that very seriously. When you're gone, we know that you are essentially entrusting us with your property in, that, in your absence. So we have always been very, very grateful to have an extraordinary amount of support from our mutual aid partners. We have peace officers from all over the Bay Area and Northern California come up and help us with those evacuations to do uh, patrolling. So typically, they're the ones who you'll find at the road closures, mm -hmm. and we use our deputies to patrol because we know the areas really well. So we'll definitely use mutual aid deputies and, and peace officers to assist, but we take that really seriously. In the past several fires that we've had, we've had about a dozen arrests in each fire mm -hmm. for people who were in the evacuation zone when they shouldn't have been. A very small per percentage, one or two of those had actually looted. So we catch people when they're not in the evacuation right. zone when they shouldn't be before there's a major problem. Right, so the concern is much larger than what we're actually seeing in reality yeah. too yeah. for that. You know, a, another question um, for you, Ben, and this is kind of a tough one though, um, with all of the experience that we've had as a nation with hurricanes and other disasters and fires, um, are we learning anything recently about um, evacuation hesitancy that we can put into place now that we're seeing? When, when people, they just don't want to leave, different ways you can convince people to do that? Um, not necessarily convincing them, but mm -hmm. it's, it's the education campaign to make sure that <coughs> people are clear on what a warning is and what an order is. And so when an evacuation mm -hmm. warning goes into play, that's their, their time to get on those starting blocks and prepare to sprint. And when the order comes, mm -hmm. everything should be packed and ready to go and they're gone because we have had um, uh, fire events that have come from undeveloped areas into developed areas here in Sonoma County in the last couple years. My concern is that the fire that starts in a heavily populated area in some of our more rural remote communities that don't have the road network infrastructure that we have elsewhere and <clears throat> any lost time um, aggravates any potential loss of life. Great. Now let's get back to some viewer questions. Um, Karen is in the question center. And Karen, I know we've had some calls and emails coming in. Um, what are you seeing? Yeah, thanks, Darren. Yeah, just a follow-up question to what Sam was just speaking. This viewer wanted to know the difference risk-wise between an order to evacuate and a warning to evacuate. And then also we have um, a, an anonymous question from a viewer. I heard that people can get we evacuated signs to hang on their doors to help first responders when they leave. Where can they find those? And then a final question is, last year I kept hearing about TEPs, and so they want to know what exactly is that and will we use them this year as well? Uh, all right, so those are the questions. Remember, you can call 1-800-287-2722 or viewer at norcalpublicmedia.org and also find us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at NorCal Public Media. Okay, Darren, back to you. 
Thank you very much, Karen. Okay, so let's dig into some of those questions here. Um, what is the difference, Misty, um, between evacuation warning and evacuation order, so people can understand that? Evacu mm -hmm. Evacuation warning mm -hmm. is a notice that you should be ready to evacuate, you should be prepared. So it's not an order to leave, it's essentially letting you know that danger is nearby and you should be prepared to evacuate. Mm -hmm. So this is the time to pack up your items. Um, if you have large animals, or other needs in your household that are um, make it a little bit more difficult to evacuate. If you have people who have mobility issues or perhaps they're elderly, it's actually a really good time to evacuate before the order happens. Mm -hmm. It's a really good time to take advantage of it is during that evacuation warning. An evacuation order is the requirement to leave. So that is the legal order from the sheriff's office saying, now you have to leave. So that's the difference between the two of those. And how about that question about the signs? People have been hearing that you can get some signs to hang on your door that say you've been evacuated. Yeah. Um, so first responders don't have to worry about you. Where yeah. do they get those? Yeah, so we have evacuation tags at the sheriff's office mm -hmm. that we're distributing for free to the public. You can pick them up at any of our stations. So we have our main office in Santa Rosa, our river substation, our valley substation, and also Windsor Police Department and Sonoma Police Department as our contract cities. And so these are tags that say evacuated on them that you place in a highly visible location when you leave. And it lets the first responder know that you've already left. So the beautiful thing about this is when the deputy comes up to your property, he or she doesn't have to drive down your driveway, right. through a lock gate, check the house, and spend those precious minutes searching. <laughs> They already know that you've left, and so it speeds up evacuations. It's that idea of a small act done on a large scale, really helping evacuations move more quickly so that the entire neighborhood can be evacuated quickly, and we can let firefighters get in and do their job. Great, yeah. great. And Sam, I want to throw that last question to you. Um, what are TEPs and how people can take advantage of those? I don't know what that is myself. Well, a TEP is simply a temporary evacuation point. Uh, ah. One of the lessons that we've learned in prior disasters uh, is it takes us time to set up uh, evacuation centers. Uh, we don't have a large uh, staff that's imme immediately available 24-7, and a lot of the staffing for the uh, evacuation centers are going to come from county or city employees, and it takes time to mobilize them. And obviously, we want to get everybody out of the affected area as quickly as possible. So if we designate a temporary evacuation point, that gives everybody a direction to go, uh, from there, uh, they can uh, be marshaled, uh, they can be given uh, further instructions on where to go, and uh, it gives us time to set up their final destination if they're in fact going to go to an evacuation center. Gotcha. And also, remind people, because we've had a, a couple of questions come in from folks saying, my neighbor got an alert on their phone, I didn't get an alert on my phone, et cetera, et cetera. So remind people about some of the resources that are available and what they should sign up for to get those warnings and alerts. Oh, absolutely. And, and let me make it clear, it is, it's very possible because of a variety of reasons that you may not get the alert where your neighbor does. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be because of uh, the phone system that you have. Uh, there's a great number of uh, variables in there, and that's why we use multiple systems. Uh, but definitely you want to sign up for SoCo Alert, which you can do at www. Uh, dot socoalert.com. Uh, I urge everybody also to be signed up for Nixle, uh, which you can be, uh, do at the sheriff's website, uh, or you can just go to www.nixle.com. Uh, other alerting systems that we have, you don't have to sign up for. Uh, the wire, wireless emergency alert system, for instance, uh, if you have a cell phone that is capable of receiving it, you'll get it if you're in the affected area, uh, whether you want to or not. That sounds great. So there are a lot of resources out there for folks to take advantage of. Absolutely. In fact, if you go to socoemergency.org, we have an entire page uh, dedicated to alert and warning systems and the many that are out there and uh, how you can best utilize them. All right. That sounds great. Well, I tell you what, that went by very, very quickly. Um, we answered a lot of questions here tonight. Um, I want to thank our guest, Sam Wallace, from the Sonoma County Department of Emergency Management. Also, Misty Wood um, from the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office and Ben Nichols. Cal Fire Division Chief from Sonoma Lake Napa Unit. So thanks to all three of you for joining us here tonight and answering folks' questions. Um, let's hope that we helped a lot of people tonight and gave them a lot of great information. And remember, if you want to continue this conversation, you can do that online at norcalpublicmedia.org where we can continue to give you resources, 
questions and information that you need. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Darren Lachelle for NorCal Public Media.